All right, back to this episode two, I guess. If I bother to put this one out, Capcom. Capcom was one of the biggest heel turns I did on a game company because you got to remember I came from like PlayStation, where I was a kid throughout the like the PlayStation cycle. I was a like very young for the PS One then young adult, PS2, then I moved to the 360 because um, we just all heard that the PS3 was going to be this much money, and then we never heard the actual price of it. After that, we were just told, it's a lot of money, and at like the um, announcement for those kind of things, everyone was just saying, yeah, well, you know, the guys that made like Sony were just saying, well, you better save up your money. And we're like really not backing down on how expensive it was. And it was back when they had those stupid banana rang controllers as well. And it looked really futuristic. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah, there's going to be so many great games on that. And then not many good games came out. I actually wrote a list back in the day to make myself decide. And I was like, Gears of War or Haze and Resistance Fall of Man. Um, this exclusive or that exclusive? And looking back in retrospect, I was thinking Haze and Resistance were going to be as good as Gears of War. So um, yeah, that's what it was like back in those days, because you got all of your information from magazines, really, still back then. Or well, I did, anyway. <clears throat> yeah, it meant that um, there was a lot of spin. There was straight-up lies in those things, where they were paid to say a really nice puff piece about absolute shit games. I can't remember any off the top of my head. But if I do, we can come back to that at some point. Some really trash games were being like put down as like, oh yeah, this is going to be absolutely amazing. You all have to play. Oh, Rogue Galaxy was one of them. Everyone was like, Rogue Galaxy is going to be the best RPG you play this generation. It's going to be better than Lost Odyssey. That's trash. You should be playing Rogue Galaxy. And me being like, I don't know any JRPGs of any kind. I've never played any. Oh, I'll try this one. I'm thinking, this is pretty cool. Because it was like the first time I saw any kind of anime, kind of style animation where the sword's on fire. And they're like, you are, and doing all these poses and shit. And I thought like some of the darker, edgier characters in the pirate kind of universe it's in were really cool. Why am I talking about Rogue Galaxy? And like, I never finished the game. And I just assumed that it was because... Um, Mm, yes, I can do some Dudley. Um, fight Yang. Um, yeah, and the um, the game was okay, but it was not anything amazing. It was like really well designed, and there were some cool characters and stuff, and they were trying to really sell it. I think it was PSX magazine. Which is like a, but I might be wrong on that. I'm sure I must have been playing that on the 360 by then, though. Did it come out on PS2 or 360? I can't remember the time scale I was playing it, but I thought it was really cool. Let's just get some warm ups. Okay, or maybe not. Why oh, try and remember all of my buttons? It's been like two days and I've already gotten worse. He was ready for my slow ass wake up. That was a terrible, just me hitting button thing. I am going to trash. Uh, I need to remember to actually block and not be a chump. So I've got this terrible habit when fighting uh, in the Street Fighter game. Oh, I got hit by the taunt, what the fuck? I didn't even know that was a thing with Yang. Uh. Uh, I got this horrible thing of like forgetting what am I doing with my life. Um, when the character standard throws me, the enemy standard throws me, remembering, oh yeah, I can throw, and then the next thing I do out of a terrible habit is try and approach them and throw them. Every time. 
doesn't even matter if it's like they're across, you know full screen i'll just go oh yeah i can throw it and just try and walk slowly towards them not blocking and just try and throw them even though the situation really does not like i'll stop pressing a button when he's obviously coming in what am i doing it's because i was talking that's obviously why <laughs> <laughs> I also, you notice that I do a lot of walking backwards and hardly any dashes. I jump in and I walk backwards. That's like, and then I get hit by basic little jabs like he's doing here. Look, he's just jabbing me and I'm just walking into it like a fucking idiot. <laughs> like... I'm gonna lose this match because I'm so bad. Like this can be clearly resolved. That could have been clearly resolved, and I'm like, my brain is just jelly. I'm just sitting there like, uh, how, nah. and my brain's like, hit a button, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm gonna try that and actually try and get my brain out of the gutter of scrub. Uh, so. Yeah, I have a lot of bad habits when it comes to fighting games. Like, I forget how to block for each game. If it's a button to block, I'll hold back. If it's not, I just won't block. And I'll do that. No, oh, I'm walking backwards again. And, like, when you're a rushdown character and you do a lot of rushing, you've got to get in there and stay in there. And I just literally go, I'm going to walk into projectile range and, like, make it harder for me to come back in. Oh, he came on the way down. Okay, yeah, you're ready. Could have seen me coming from full screen with that. I have some terrible, really awkward habits, which are like, why would you have that habit? It's just you're, you're easing off of a character when you have them against the ropes. Uh, you're just trying to walk slowly towards them. You're not dashing ever. See? <laughs> I always slightly like happy when uh, I anti air or I actually hit someone with the rose. <laughs> like. Yeah, I'm just gonna waste my EX on this dumbass shit. And not not bring out the super, because I'm <laughs> look at this failed super input shit. He's mocking me! Cause I'm sitting there going, ducking, <laughs> cause just jumping up and down like this, teabagging no one, cause I can't do the fucking input anymore. So I mentioned quite a lot, because every 90s kid does, that there were a 90s kid, so you can imagine that I was not playing this when it first came out. Well, try and fight Ibuki. I mean, actually, I've, do, I've only fought Ibuki a few times in 4 and in 3, so... Oh man, I actually played Ibuki a little bit in uh, 5, and I was like, oh, this is, yeah, this, this could be a thing, and then I just stopped playing 5 like most people did. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, Akuma's there, I'll go back in and play Akuma, and then I stopped again, and then, <laughs> like most people did. Wait, is there, like, you see that thing following me? Is that, is that, why is there, there was a snake. What's that thing floating in the air, is that an artifact? You see by the tree, oh, it's gone, oh, it's a dragonfly. I was like, what is that, and I still won the match. <laughs> don't need to jump in all the time, that's a bad habit. Oh, what? I thought it... Oh, that was a quite a good exchange for an idiot like me. <laughs> Why did I go for heavy? Fun fact about Dudley's ducking, that everyone who's ever played this game should probably know if they've played Dudley. Um... Oh, she... Oh! <laughs> oh! I'm so mad! <laughs> I was trying to throw her three times and she threw me! 
And teched my throw. I don't. I'm not very good at throw teching in this version. I can throw tech much more easily. You can do everything more easily in Street Fighter Five because it's like, why did I duck into a kick? Fun thing about Dudley's ducking: if you time it right, you can duck under a Hadouken. I always don't do it right, and I always just walk into a Hadouken because I time it wrong. Because I'm not very actually. I only have some time fighting Hadoken using characters because they're not like the AI for Ken is like I often fight Ken but not Ryu. So Ken just sure you can the shit out of you. Oh. But she changed outfit in the wind animation. Why would she change again? I'm getting plot holes and wind quotes here. But we'll try again because I need to learn how to fight against people. <laughs> like. <laughs> I forgot that that was the bummer. <laughs> Oh, we're doing this. We're doing keep away, are we? <laughs> How's that for a range, really? You notice my habit to jump in rather than to dash in? And my habits of just being bad <laughs> and not defending. <laughs> Why do you use rushdown characters? Because I don't know how to defend. <laughs> Oh! I thought I had her there. I thought I was gonna. I'm putting the inputs in too fast and just butchering them. Me and my friend Rob were going through uh, Street Fighter V trials and he brought up the input, you know, where it shows you in the corner the buttons you're pressing. And he's like, This is me doing a Hadoken. And he did a Hadoken. Here's you doing a Hadoken. And we've watched me do a Hadoken. And it's the least clean input you have ever seen in your life. There's like a hundred button presses that it doesn't need to be where I'm pressing square or whatever fireball button I'm using three or four times and just mashing and like spinning the stick and it's just like you don't need to do that much don't know why I ex that because I knew it wasn't going to hit I'm trying to get in the computer's head I'm wasting meter just to... Oh, I won. I was certain I was needed another match then. Yeah, I need to get more tactical with this stuff. Let's just walk into the kicks. Let's just walk into the kicks. That's clever. What was I born yesterday? <laughs> it's Chun Li. Don't walk into the kicks. Don't jump at a guile. <laughs> Dash into spinning bird kick. <laughs> like. Okay, I deserve that. <laughs> Way too fast. Hello. <laughs> Every time she does it, I should just do that. Or just mess up the taunt because I'm an idiot. There we go. Thing that people who never played third strike don't know is that if you taunt, someone told me if you taunt successfully three times, um, you get some sort of passive buff for the rest of the match and it's 
character specific. So if you do it with Alex three times, it's going to do something different to if you do it with um. And if you do it with Q three times, you know, it's just different for each character. It's more relevant. I have no idea what Dudley's is, whether his speed increases or like his. He seems a little faster, but I'm just. It would make sense for speed for him, wouldn't it? Oh. <laughs> she kicked the roots. Okay. This really painted Chun Li as being like obsessed with being the strongest woman in the world this game. Whereas in the other ones, I just felt that she was just like, I like Kung Fu and I'm a detective and a cop and all of these things and I've adopted a girl and all of this stuff was happening and it seemed to change all the time. She had a lot of stuff going on. And then suddenly she's just like, oh yeah, I, I really like, uh, need to prove even though I guess by this time, she must have been like, uh, quite old. I mean, how old was she in Alpha and we can work forwards, but like, I'm sure someone has. Just eating stupid shit here. <sighs> Let's pay attention. By the way, this isn't what China looks like now. This is probably what China looked like in like, the 70s? <laughs> like, a lot of the old buildings aren't really standing in China anymore. They've been doing a lot of renovation. It's a lot of like, it's like the rest of the world now. I know, I live there. <laughs> oh, parry the rose. I will punch you slightly in the stomach. Stop hitting buttons when you don't need to hit buttons. <laughs> Should have thrown. Yes. <laughs> well, that was terrible. I tried to throw, she threw me. I tried to super, she punched me. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm bothering her now, because <laughs> I keep losing. Let's go and annoy Yum. This is a really cool street scene. Uh, you could imagine this actually being in Hong Kong because of the way that their signage is in places like Kowloon and stuff, uh, and like uh, Mong Kok and places like that. It's actually a lot like this. I used to live in a, a street in Cham Choi Po, uh, which is actually one of the most working class classic areas of um, Kowloon that's still standing that hasn't kind of been gentrified or, um, you know, it's still affordable for the working classes to live in. It's also one of the biggest pink light districts, which, uh, if you can imagine that, you can imagine what a pink light district is. Uh, I was like, oh, look, there's all these pink lights and foot massage parlors. People must have really bad feet here. I got hit by his cap. Why do I do that? I uppercut to nobody and it just leaves me open. I'm not Ken, for Christ's sake. I will walk into your fist. Let's just jump. Let's just jump. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, Hong Kong is cool. It has a lot of cool, like, kind of. If you were like, oh, I want to pretend I'm the protagonist in a grungy sci-fi cyberpunk Asia. Look at all of the big, bright, shiny lights. I'm so cool and edgy and grungy and weird. I, I live in like this kind of specific kind of aesthetic. You really need to go live in Kowloon because <clears throat> it's really like that. <laughs> um, I don't know how like it is now that I've left. It's been about two years since I lived there, but and I don't really plan on going back now. Uh, but when I was living there, it was very much like that. Uh, basically all over Kowloon it's like that, but some areas are like kind of expensive shopping areas now. The island is just like, only the rich live in the island. The rich and their maids. <laughs> like, you know, because that place, Hong Kong Island is really expensive. You have to have serious cash to go live on Hong Kong Island. I went to one place, it was like a hotel and I just ordered like a, uh, it had a cafe. And I just sat down because someone's recommended it to me. And, um, let's see if I can beat Sean this time. I thought I was holding back. <laughs> what the fuck? Parrying everything. I did like that they brought the Matsuda flap kick, what's it, what's it called, the spin, the cartwheel kick, um, back for Laura, because it's a cool kind of kick to look at visually. Eat this raw super, it will not let me win this fight, because I keep eating the tornado kick. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, cheap places to live in Hong Kong, you really end up living in the new territories, and you'll be lucky if you can get some places in, like, Kowloon kind of areas. Basically, the kind of like the, yeah, certain areas only, really. And like I was saying, I lived in like a place where the streets in the day were filled with hawkers. Different hawkers came out at night where they were selling more like dodgy shit that they couldn't be caught. Not drugs or anything, just like counterfeit goods that were really counterfeit and they've already been told to clear out several times stuff or like faulty cookware and stuff. <laughs> really weird things. And then, you know, there'd be like certain areas, the way it works in Hong Kong, like prostitution is illegal in Hong Kong. Uh, is legal in Hong Kong, um, but they're like they have a lot of rules governing it, <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> they're not allowed brothels. So you, all of these girls would be living in an area near me, in separate houses that were like mini flats, and they they wouldn't come down. It was like way more polite than that. Like it wasn't like. Amsterdam where you walk down a certain street and it's just they've all got glass windows and there's just girls in the glass windows going hello <laughs> and you're like um I went down the wrong street it's um and they're not out in the street bothering you which you get that a lot in Thailand and someone told me recently when they were in Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam they had that problem when I went to Hanoi such a clean city I thought it was really nice a few scammers but I never really had any trouble in Hanoi <clears throat> Hong Kong, where I was living, the, the, the ladies who were doing that job would be upstairs, and one of my friends started telling me about a YouTube video watch, because he's like, I wonder how they get any, uh, any business by not advertising, you know, like, how do you approach them? You can't just go up to their door, right? And, like, this guy, this expat who'd been there a long time and was a bit dodgy, he, he was putting up YouTube videos of saying exactly how you approach these people to like, and it's like, you've got to know where they live, basically, and like, you know, they'll have a light outside, like the pink light, and you have to go knock on their door, and they open the door and just kind of like, hello, and you just go, oh, hi, and if you go in, you're basically saying that you want to be with them. It's, it's really weird. Why am I talking about this? 
of all the things to talk about in my LPing career. Um, I've never done it. <clears throat> I don't think I ever would do it. I don't agree with the entire industry because it's just so rife with like corruption and human trafficking, as you can imagine. Uh, it's you know, people don't realize that that's also the case a lot with like a lot of the porn industry. Um, surprisingly, not a lot of like fair workers, and it's like almost every industry in that sense. A lot of them aren't paying their taxes. A lot of them don't have good workers' rights. Surprise, surprise, it's like almost exactly the same as working at a Burger King. <laughs> but like, obviously you're not getting like the same kind of, well, depends on how bad the Burger King is. <laughs> like, you know, um, not to, oh, I'm gonna get like attacked by Burger King employees now. Um, or any other fast food chain that's had, like I had a lot of people a lot of friends in college who were working at a very, it wasn't actually Burger King, it was another company. And I'm not just saying that, there's not many Burger Kings in the UK, not where I was living. A lot of other places though, and this one person, this two people I knew said, I used to work at this place, and I would never go back there because they literally would just stop paying you if they feel like it. They're, oh, I'm not going to pay you for this week, why? Because I don't like your face. Oh, go and clean up here. It's really busy right now and everyone's at the tills. Yeah, stand underneath them and clean up while they do stuff so they hate you. And it was just like, they would just be, they would just like, uh, some of the managers were known for being basically huge bullies. And then when people were really desperate coming out of uni, because some of us came out of uni with degrees that were like, we were told would easily get us jobs and then didn't. Uh, some One of my friends actually was so desperate for a bit, he said, if I came back to this company, to his old manager, who was still there after three years, um, who he had a decent working relationship with, which is quite rare, because a lot of people I met didn't from this franchise. Um, he said, put it this way, mate, it's cheaper for me to find someone new and train them than it is for me to bring you back on. That's how they run those services. They're like, they don't want a guy who knows the system too well because then he knows how to cheese the system. They want a newbie. They want guys that are like doing it for chump change. They want people who are just out of their newspaper rounds if they could get away with it um, because those kind of people don't know how actual employment law works yet. They keep backing off habitually and it means that rushing in on people like charge characters is really hard. So. Yeah, um, I don't know how I got onto this subject. We started at Hong Kong, we ended up at fast food chains treating people poorly. <laughs> um, treating their employees. I'm sure there's some good stories, I just hear the bad ones. Um, I worked at a certain coffee branch and they had a lot of problems in the UK, including not paying tax, and some of the ones near my area were shut down because they were a uh, front for a coke smuggling ring. That was quite fun. I definitely can't say their name. <laughs> uh, it wasn't me, <laughs> and it wasn't anyone I knew, but I worked in several branches in the South of England area. I knew people who then moved to other South of England area peak places, and um, how dost thou suck. <laughs> Oh wow, Urian was an asshole. <laughs> he still is, really. He's a slightly friendly asshole. I'll just fight Makoto. Um, yeah, and like there was a lot of things. It was around the time a newspaper article. When I first started working for them, uh, I mean, it couldn't have been them because I would have been too young, but stories came out about um, during 9 11, they were charging people. Uh, money for water to like 9-11 survivors who are just like oh my god people are dying quick can we have some water yeah that would be like a couple of dollars <laughs> and like people were like oh wow that's so super unethical they used to have a constant running drip of water to clean the coffee spoons this company and um yeah um that was, uh, <laughs> that, then someone caught hold of it and they were like, there are people in Africa who can't have clean water and you're wasting this much water every time. And then like the tax evasion and the coke ring came out and it was just like, why am I such a magnet for corruption or is this just everywhere? <laughs> like, you know, 
because like a lot of my employee uh, employers were like this. Um, I just have some dank ass stories, man, from someone who's never done drugs and uh, never really wants to, because he's seen the effects of like these things on like people who, people who are like you know, I didn't. Like, I, they weren't, like, family members, or I didn't, like, they weren't my best friends, and, like, horrible things happened to them. But it was, like, um, people I knew and or lived close to or lived with or, like, worked with or had were colleagues at my university, you know? <clears throat> and I would be, like, oh, shit, that really messes you up, right? There was a guy we went to the same uni course as him. He dropped out, spent a year not telling his dad that he'd already been kicked off of the course, and then he uh, had a heart attack relating to how many drugs he was taking. Uh, but I don't want to talk too much about him. He might get offended if, I, if I'm talking about him like this. Um, there's loads of other Dank house stories. Let's stop talking about Dank. Um, I'm bad at fighting. Let's talk about something a little less dark for five seconds. Um, oh, the chop. Chopper, chopper. Who won? Oh! <laughs> I thought I had that. Okay, fair enough. I like Makoto. I don't know if they'll ever put her in another game, but I, I like Makoto. Very simple character arc. I want to rebuild my jo dojo, and that's always all it's ever been. Simple. Easy to follow martial arts story. Dudley's is, oh, someone took my daddy's car or something. Oh, a fighting tournament. Oh, I'll have to take my mind off of it. I need new roses for my garden. Ah, oh, fun fact, actually. Dudley is based off of a real boxing person. Uh, there's rumors, anyway, that his uh, design comes from a boxer that existed either in the 60s or 70s in the UK, who was like... Um, Jamaican or West Indies of heritage, but affected a lot of British gentlemanly stuff as like his kind of like in-ring character, like that was his promo. So he was like, you know, that was his big thing. He was like a big Jamaican or like West Indies guy. I, I don't know the name. And uh, he was just like, um, uh, yeah, he'd just be like, oh, I say, and he had like war monocles and stuff and was just like trying to like, kind of like, Maybe he was trying to trigger, like, uh, a kind of thing where, you know, back in those days in the UK, people may have seen that as offensive, like, the, um, the more racist kind of people <laughs> would have been like, oh, he can't, that's our, that's our monocle, <laughs> the I see is our word, <laughs> but, like, uh, I don't know what he was trying to do, or if it was just a style he was going for, because it drew attention, but anyway, like, a lot of people are saying that Dudley has a lot of these affectations, and he isn't the first character that was just taken uh, or, like, obviously emulated from real life. He's not even the first boxing character to have been emulated directly from a real person. Oh, oh I fucked that up. Yeah. Can you go? Can you go? Can we try? Can. Uh, yeah, I don't really know that that boxer's name or like the tactics behind it, but it made him like stand out from the uh, other boxers of the time, and especially in the British boxing scene um, at the time. And like he got a bit of a following, and it. I mean, I've heard stories that Sagat is based off of an actual Thai boxer, but that it's like, I'm not sure if that's true. I think it's like famously is true or something. <laughs> like, I mean, 
obviously, uh, Balrog is, I wonder who he's based off of. Bruce Lee, <laughs> Jackie Chan, <laughs> you know, like, you know, it's kind of obvious. They, they, they literally had to change the names around. Um, so, you know, and there's obviously a lot of stories of these games having a lot of references to JoJo and having a lot of inspiration. Oh, I sure you can can to death. Ooh. Oh, I should have thrown him. Okay. I will come towards you. That was stupid. <laughs> what a great trade. <laughs> Small explosion happens between us because we're just idiots. Okay, fine. My uppercut doesn't work. His done. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of JoJo stuff in here as well, and you could see Dudley being like kind of a anime JoJo sort of reference, but. He does look a bit like Darby. A little bit. Let's see a little bit of Darby in there, you know? But I mean, if you like kind of blur your eyes a little bit. Well, actually, like in that kind of artwork there, it does look a lot like Darby. <clears throat> yeah, the creators of uh, Street Fighter are always saying that there's a lot of like JoJo references. And you can see it a lot. I mean, like I thought Yurian and Gil were very Pillarman esque. Um, feels like, you know, there's some of their just designs in general. There's obviously a lot of stuff saying that Jury and Jolene almost look identical, but like, I think there's enough difference that it's legally distinct. <laughs> like, you know. Every time they do that, I'm just like, oh, they parry the rose. <laughs> Be sure you can the rose, that's overkill. Oh, <laughs> they just gave him that. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Maybe I should play Ken later. Yeah, kicked in the dick. <laughs> Punched in the dick. Uh, so I used to do martial arts, and this just reminded me. <laughs> I used to do Muay Thai. I still kind of do it all. But like I used to go to a gym and do Muay Thai in, uh, all over the place. But this happened in Qingdao when I was work living and working in Qingdao. Um, we were doing a lot of like... You do a lot of pain resistance or just conditioning kind of stuff, depending on your coach. Some of them are just like, yeah, you got to do that because always you're not tough. And you're like, okay, let this guy punch you in the stomach as hard as he can like 10 times. And they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, like I don't really feel it in the stomach very much, probably because my stomach's quite cushiony. <laughs> and um, it's not that bad, but like, uh, you know, I, I don't, I've got quite a numb pain response anyway. I always have. And... I was like, yeah, it's fine. And then this guy starts kicking me as well, and we're doing this, and he's like punching me in the stomach. And then eventually, he's kind of just punching me so low, he's nearly punching me in the balls. And the coach comes over and just looks at him, uh, who's punching me, and I, he's just like, no. <laughs> like, you know, stop punching him in the balls, no. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, I'm glad you said anything, because being an awkward Brit, I was just like, I'm not going to tell him that he's getting very close to my dick area, but it's making me quite uncomfortable. Let's try Hugo. <laughs> yeah. 
it's some great stories from kickboxing because it's like got a lot of humor to it because people do funny things. I do a lot of funny things because I'm actually quite bad. I suck at roundhouse kicks because my like I'm just not very flexible in the legs. I never noticed that Hugo's got a big picture of himself. That's oh look at my fucking hell. Well, I just lost this. He's got a big picture of himself in the house. It distracted me. <laughs> this is quite hard. He does a lot of damage. I forgot about that. I only fought him as Alex because he's like the rival battle for Alex, I think. Or they have a special animation anyway when they enter. So I've never really had this fight. Uh, you gotta remember, I picked up uh, third strike only for a little while. But it's interesting. I might try it again. Just see how it goes, you know. The rival battle for Dudley is Ryu for some reason, and it feels like the most tacked on we didn't know what to do with Dudley thing ever. Well, that didn't work. Maybe I'm supposed to do lots of cross counter stuff because he just keeps attacking with big heavy hits that are like straight to the face. So I feel like he get cross countered quite easily, but I can't actually reliably do the full motion stuff. That's why I don't play Zongief and stuff because I'm pretty bad. <laughs> that reaction where he gets the rose on his face is like, <laughs> like you know, just like okay. He has a lot of jiggle physics in his face, Hugo. I think that's what makes him really ugly and 3D in Street Fighter 4. He's just like, he's just got a horrible mask like face. Think of another hilarious Thai boxing thing. I used to go Thai boxing and I forget the place, it may have been called Futak or something, um, in uh, <coughs> Hong Kong. And it used to be a tiny room. I lost that. Tiny room in the new territories because everything's tiny in um, Hong Kong. The spaces, I mean, that, that you can rent out. Um, <coughs> Let me try again. One more time and then I'll try Ken again. Just gonna keep going for a little while. Yeah, it used to be a tiny little room. And like I would be like the only guy that's not Cantonese, right? And there was lots of girls doing it. Lots of girls that would come in from what was apparently school to just immediately like <clears throat> and they you know, it was really weird because they come in in their school uniform and then kick ass and you were just like, What is this like street fighter in real life shit? <laughs> like, you know. Um but there was some like girls who are like older because and like I'll talk about like how weird the people are in Hong Kong uh well how they react to me anyway or how they reacted to me um one time but there was this girl who was always there and she was pretty tough I never really spoke to her because she didn't seem to have any English and she didn't seem like she wanted anyone to talk to her if I'm honest like she was just there, she seemed to have been hit on by everybody and she was just sick of it. And like this one guy hit on her in front of me and I was leaving and collecting all of my like gloves and shit and putting them in my bag because it's just finished. And like um, they were hitting on her and she pointed to me, said something in Cantonese and then held up her hands in a certain position, you know, uh, 
pointed to me and then pointed to them and then did this, you know, the, the thumb and the finger, thumb and the index finger, not very far away from each other kind of like thing. And I was pretty sure she just said the Cantonese too. I, f I sleep with guys like him because guys like you are like this. And that was around the time I quit going to that gym because <laughs> those guys were ripped, very talented because I've seen them and they fought competitively, Thai boxers. And she just basically shamed them and dragged me into her, this thing. And I'd never spoken to her in my life. And I was like, well, I can't come back because I'm going to get my ass handed to me next time I come here. Just because she was like, oh, yeah, I don't sleep with you Asian guys. And I was like, oh, great, thanks. <laughs> like, what's wrong with them? Racist bitch. <laughs> you know, trying to take their side. Like, I don't want to get hit in the face. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try and concentrate. stomped. Gotta get that reach. Just playing this like... Gotta get in and combo and get out again and it's hard because he's just like a wall. <laughs> Oh, I was blocking that, I thought. You notice I'm using a lot of specials lately. It's because I've forgotten all of the combos. Pins don't work. <laughs> Stop doing it. They can work, but because you notice I have trouble with like the big slow characters because I don't dash enough. And that backing down I keep doing is making it harder for me to get in. Then I lose more. We'll try Ken again in a little while. Yeah, so that was not a fun time. Um, what other funny things? Oh yeah, every time I got a tattoo, no matter where I went afterwards, and I've got tattoos over the years in multiple places, every time I was like, I shouldn't go in case they hit the tattoo, but I'll keep it covered. And every time I go to a Thai boxing thing, they hit me in exactly the place the tattoo is. It's like they know and they're tattoo seeking, even if it's covered. They're like showing that they decide to use me to demo on where you're supposed to be kicking with a roundhouse. And they're like, put your arm in the way to block it. And you're like, oh, okay. And like, they immediately hit the tattoo. I'm just like, oh, fuck's sake. Because it's not a nice place when it's sensitive to have like a bear guy's feet smacking into it like you know and just like only lightly because they're pulling the kicks and punches but it's still like oh <laughs> you know just got that I don't want you to mess up the inking on it by like bruising that area that happened twice actually because I got two tattoos in a two-year period on the same part of my arm or a similar part on the outside of my left forearm that were both small for like flash kind of style pieces that I didn't pay very much for that was still really nicely done uh, by really professional artists, but like, you know, just small pieces. So, yeah. <laughs> Great thing about living in uh, Asia is there are quite a few good tattoo artists, and in some places they don't really pay a lot, but they're actually really good. And there's a lot of traditional stuff, but you start to notice the difference between, very quickly, there is a massive difference 
between traditional uh, Chinese and traditional Japanese and traditional Korean tattoos and their idea of like what's like okay well, I'm gonna mess this up <laughs> stashing I did better before when I didn't know what other parry was. <laughs> Elena or Alex? Elena, Alex. to stop hitting buttons when they do stuff. Uh, what else was I gonna... What were we just talking about? Yeah, martial arts and stuff. And tattoos, yeah. Uh, personally, if I'm gonna have a preference, I really like, and I mean, this is probably the more commonly known as well for with a lot of people in popular media. Um, <clears throat> but, um, really like a traditional Japanese work but I know a lot I follow a lot of guys on um, that I that were doing guest spots in Hong Kong when I was there that are from Korea that do lots of really nice black work style stuff which is like really cool but I haven't got anything from them yet <coughs> so um that's something that I've always wanted to do, go to Korea and get a decent black work off of them. They do like snakes and like skulls and stuff. I've got a lot of skulls, so I'll probably get a snake. Um, yeah, like uh, I was going for a monochrome thing until relatively recently when someone convinced me, a tattoo artist, a chick, said to me, oh, you've got really great skin because she's basically saying you're super pale. <laughs> and like, uh, you know, oh, if I had your skin, I would like... Uh, get so many colors because they must stand out so vibrantly and I was like yeah I get it I'm super white <laughs> like you know and like she I got this really nice blue and purple skull tattoo off of a really talented artist in Hong Kong um it's really good it's one of my favorite tattoos he was a really talented artist he does this stuff where it looks like a like a calligraphy ink it's really nice oh, I lost that hard <clears throat> Just when it gets to the last hit, you're just trying to get the hit in, and you just delete your own health bar by doing that, by being too hasty. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, um, I wanted to get something that's more varied and a different style again, because I tend to go for, like I said, Japanese traditional. I got a Chinese traditional style tiger, and I like it, but um, I was. Uh, and it was pretty cheap, but and a really good tattoo artist. <clears throat> They're quite cheap in China because they don't get much business. Because in China, it's not got like the kind of like it's weird. They're both really frowned upon in standard because China and Japan both have quite conservative attitudes towards a lot of things, but definitely tattoos. Come on, last hit. <laughs> See what I mean? I get like fussy about the last hit and I'm like, come on, I just need to kill him. One more hit. Now. I do like fighting Alex. I'm playing as Alex. 
just not very good at it. All that elbow, I just ate that elbow. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah, I wanted a different style and like I really like Japanese tradition. And like I said, both China and uh, Japan are quite a conservative kind of country when it comes to the attitudes. It's like, because a lot of their gangs uh, have tattoos, like Triad and Yakuza all have tattoos, like it's their thing. You, They have like crazy amounts of ink, their entire body basically. It's the thing and it's like, you see it a lot, um, well you don't see it a lot. Remy or Akuma, let's fight Akuma and get wrecked then go to a Remy. Um, <clears throat> you see it. You know what really knocked me out of this game was like, oh my god, it looks like Akuma's getting grey. Oh my god, Akuma's aging. That that's no that's when you know, that's when you know time is passing. He has a white streak in his hair, and he's just like a kind of standard selectable character, which is not normally what, not normally well he is now, but. It was the first time I was like, oh my god, Akuma's just a person. <laughs> really overpowered, well, really strong person. But like, um, yeah, you know. I like Akuma, his plot and stuff is really cool. His like, whole like reasoning for doing things, and it's like he sees himself as like not, he doesn't need to involve himself in the tournament a lot of the time. It's pretty cool where he's just like, Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing it for money or anything, so I'm not going to engage in the tournament. I'm just going to appear and fight people who I think are worthy. Super, like, you can't just do that in a tournament. <laughs> but, you know. Don't know why I would do two EXs in a row. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh man, the Akumas. Because of Akuma, I always thought it'd be really cool to get a back piece of a random kanji symbol. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll try him again, and then we'll try Remy. Yeah, you can see he's got a little bit of armor. Yeah, I, that just drove me nuts when I first saw him. So, oh my god. But it makes sense, I guess. Considering this is actually like time has passed. Seemingly Kami, Guile, and other people have retired by this point. And like Balrog's nowhere to be seen, and all of these like the Shadowloo people are just gone. Oh my health bar. Oh I should stop talking for a second. <laughs> <clears throat> This guy's, this guy's for real. Well, I'm just bad. Both, but, you know. Yeah, um... Akuma, why? Akuma, please. Please. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh... But like, you know, popular culture and like stuff in Japan has probably really like opened up the idea that tattoos are kind of cool and edgy and stuff. But you're still having a lot of problems where um, people like in China, the general public are like, oh, yeah, you're a foreigner. So it doesn't matter. You, you know, you having tattoos. We understand that your culture is different. So it's fine. And they kind of just let you get away with it. And you're still allowed to go to spas and like steam rooms and get nude with everybody and go swimming and although every time I go swimming I basically 
obesity def defi definitely will get that lane of the pool <clears throat> to myself for free. Uh, you know, even if it's a busy pool, people will get out and just move away from me. But there's no, there's no like you're not allowed. They're like, well, you paid for the gym membership, so you're, you know, you can come here. How did I just get hit by that? Yeah. So um. Is there any law behind what the hell this nightclub behind us is? Because it's always driven me nuts that why is there some weird skull shooting gas out with spiky eyeballs and like a top hat? It looks like it's a Clockwork Orange reference because of the spiky eyeball motif where it's trying to emulate the makeup a little bit but it's like at the same time it's just so different and it looks like a slash hat so it's like um you know because it's got the like you know like a patterned kind of like band it's just like what what is this like a thing in universe probably not just that's what france is like according to them the developers of this game yeah so in japan you're still not allowed in a lot of places to go into like onsens and stuff and it does suck that because i always wanted to try it as a tourist once and there's like ones where they allow us in with if you have tattoos but like you can't just go to the beach in Japan uh, with tattoos because people will move their their uh, children and stuff away from you because they're terrified that they're going to get caught in something that they shouldn't because Yakuza is like <clears throat> a little different and like both the Yakuza and Triad have, uh, I'm pretty sure, hired or used outside people before. It's just that, you know, the perceptions are different, like... They got a real, like, it's a shame because I think Japanese tattoos, the traditional stuff, is, like, really nice. I really love, like, I've got a big Japanese uh, dragon down my right arm. And uh, even though the guy that I was getting the things from is uh, Cantonese in Hong Kong, and the skull and the other stuff he did, it's all, like, Japanese traditional too. Um, because, like, the guy he learned off of, he went to Japan and learned it all off of this Japanese guy. So, um, it's all, like, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, here's the Ryu fight. Oh, that famous samurai fight. I, I, I just don't understand. This shall be quite enjoyable. I can't, I, I just, it doesn't gel in my head that, like, Dudley and Ryu would ever converse or even really, you know, be looking and infused to see each other. They'd just be like, oh, this guy, yeah, I guess he's my next fight, you know, like, at this point, I've just thought Ryu would be too bored from fighting it, that he, and, like, Dudley's kind of disrespectful and be like, oh, and he literally calls him that samurai fighter. It's like, what? <laughs> that's, that's a translation thing. It's like, what? Ryu is... What? That's not the name of the martial art he uses. What the... He's never been... Someone will bring up something where he was actually dressed like a samurai once. And that's... That's where... I could do it. I'm just being bad. <clears throat> It's a shame I would like to go and live and work in Japan, but I just feel like I would not fit in particularly well because of like the way I am. But I mean, I don't fit in in China particularly well because, you know, of who I am. So it's like, you're just gonna get that all over Asia, to be honest, because you clearly are not from that place. And there's always gonna be people if you are like, no matter who you are and where you're living, if you are a minority person in anything, you're going to have somebody say to you at some point in your life, in public transport, doesn't matter what country you're in, someone will say something dumb, uneducated, or racist towards you that will be along the lines of, you're coming over here stealing our women and or slash the jobs and the women jobs. And if you're like, you know, you just have really offensive things say to you, said to you, and like, 
it normally equates to just, you know, stupid comments and or monkey noises, because no matter what race you are, we're all descended from monkeys, so racists always use that, <laughs> and it's always apparently applicable. Um, because, you know, it's almost like we're descended from the same ancestors, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> and that that's how ludicrous racism is. So yeah, um, tattoos and stuff, martial arts. I guess I could talk about martial arts for a little while, while I do this. Uh, if you know literally nothing about martial arts, uh, I'm just going to talk about Muay Thai for a bit and talk about how that's, what that entails basically. If you didn't know, uh, it's, you know, how do I introduce it? Oh, look, let's just walk into fireballs while I try and think. Shut up, Ryu! <laughs> Maybe in a minute. <laughs> Gotta shut this guy up, because he just point blank Hudukens! It's my fault for like accepting them into my face and my home and my life. These Hadokens coming over here, stealing my health bar. <laughs> Punched in roughly the torso. Yes, Ryu is gutter trash of it. <laughs> oh, I see that. I tried to duck it and I just fucked it. Yeah, there. See, it's doable. Just you have like a very small window. And it's not really viable all of the time unless you're literally quite close and it brings you around him straight away to like punchy range. There, it was pointless. It just left me open to a second Hadouken. <laughs> distancing, distancing. There. So let's talk about introductions to Muay Thai, if you didn't know. Uh, thai boxing is like a... Uh, kickboxing style martial art. Um, oh, the put downs, man. <laughs> um, oh, we're fighting Gil. Yay! I never liked his design. I liked his lines. I liked what he entailed, but I never particularly liked his design. I just thought it was a bit like... See, that's cool. But, like, I just don't like the whole, I'm half Blue Man group and half Pyron. <laughs> like, you know, I just think it looks silly. I understand what it's going for. But, like, I don't think the Pillar Men's designs, like, they're cool in a kind of imposing way. But, like, would you go out dressed like ACDC? No. Would you go out dressed like Gil? That's a bold statement. <laughs> That's a bold statement right there. That is, I think I can pull off this wrapped toga speedo thing that's i i'm a little <laughs> i'm a little i believe that i'm an adonis <laughs> kind of move i wouldn't even go swimming in speedos man oh well i thought i was winning and then i wasn't <laughs> hey i don't want to Falling for jab shit. <laughs> I do like that, that, like, you know, one side, you know, the elements and stuff, but it does feel a bit like. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, oh, fire and ice. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, like we haven't seen that in like everything since ever. But you know, I get it, I get it. Let's just leapfrog towards him like a weirdo. Yeah, I'm gonna be losing this. <laughs> hey, I punched his leg. And like, yeah, I just don't really like his face. Just seems like a weird. No, I don't know. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> I'm never gonna finish this uh, story, and I think most people know what Muay Thai is, but like, um. Yeah, Muay Thai is like a kickboxing thing, but uh, the way it differs from there's a lot of different kickboxing things. Um, Thai boxing, you can use your knees and elbows is the primary thing, and like it means that you can do a lot of stuff, and you've got a lot of more tools available, and like it does rely around a lot of like kicks being distancing and guard crushing tools. You can ignore that. <laughs> That's for later. Um, Yeah, <laughs> uppercut into chop, into dead. Now, Sorry, I'm focusing quite a lot on this. I doubt you need my tutorials on stuff anyway, because it's like facts that you either know and care about, or it's like you, you know, you don't know and you don't care. Um, but like, um, <clears throat> yeah, like there's actually quite a few, and they've traced um, a lot of these uh, the Southeast Asian martial arts, like Muay Thai, Muay Lao, Burmese Left Way, and uh, what's the Khmer one? What's the Cambodian martial art? Is that? Well, I can't remember. A lot of them come from like an uh, like an older martial art that came from India along the time that uh, Hinduistic Buddhism came from came across that area. And uh, it's quite interesting because they all stem from the same thing, and as a result, are all re fairly similar, but have just slight changes in moveset. And it's really interesting to look at, but like, like I said before, um, he's just punching me with normals, and I'm just letting him hit me. I think it's just because he's big and he's shiny. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm gonna get wrecked. Still a better boss than Seth in 4, that was a horrible fight every time. It's just not a fun fight. Wow. That kind of, uh, doesn't help that whenever I fight a boss I just forget all my buttons. might be a long time. <laughs> he even let me out of the stun. I hate characters that do this, I'm just gonna teleport, float over you and jump on your head stuff. I know M. Bison and a bunch of characters have it. Oro. Uh, but like, I just never really like those moves. Even Alex's stomp move, it just irritates me. Probably because I'm not very good at defending against them, but like, I can defend against Oros and others. It's just, it feels like you're just floating around, following me around the screen, jumping on my head. It's like, what are you, Super Mario? Yeah, <laughs> I thought he was going to keep walking forward. Just 
just don't like that move. It's just an annoying move. And he's literally just punching me and I'm just eating it like an idiot. So it's my own fault. See? Ah, oh, okay. Get a few hits in, get excited, then eat three standard punches. Look at me. Terrible! <laughs> that did nothing. We'll do it. It'll be like an hour of me just failing a guild fight, but like, I don't care. <laughs> um. If I could do combo, that would help. Yeah, I blocked it. Then immediately killed. and was too far away. <laughs> keep fighting him. So yeah, like a lot of uh, kickboxing based martial arts stem from this. Uh, one central martial art, which I don't really know the name of, but stemmed in India, um, and then developed separately. <clears throat> um, but like, you know, like there's so many kickboxing martial arts, there's Savat, there's a K1 style kickboxing, there's like a lot of different ones that are like they all have a different kind of rule set, but, you know, it just depends on whether or not they allow certain things. Like left way, Burmese left way, is really interesting because it allows headbutts. But, like, I watched a few tournaments of that and it's not regularly used because it's quite a difficult tool, the headbutt, <laughs> to use in a standard fight. Um, but that's, like, what is kind of predominantly known in like if you know nothing about it that's kind of like oh yeah like oh then they're, they're the one that does that thing right and it's like
Yeah. Oh no. Oh, I thought he was going to come forward. He threw an ice ball. <sighs> this is going to be a long... <laughs> Why am I bad? It's been a while since I fought Gil. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this, like, if you're looking for a full arcade run. <laughs> um, I just don't like fighting Gil very much. <laughs> I was not expecting that to work. <laughs> I would just do this forever. <laughs> the same moves at each at the air as a warding off kind of thing. Well. Oh <laughs> he just sat there. Just win around. I just want to prove I can win around. I can do it. I believe. I can't. Stupid girl. <laughs> no. Uh, I don't care about your immortality. Yes. Can they just let me win out of pity for how bad I am? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Oh, that was kind of telegraphed as fuck, so yeah. That was me trying really hard as well. <laughs> so, um, I feel shame. Need to stop backing off. I'm a rushdown character. I'm like just waiting for him to get up. Like. <laughs> backing off, giving him respectable distance. <laughs> whole point is to just keep hitting him. Because, like, he's backing off to give himself distance, and I'm just like, cool. <laughs> Yee! Oh! oh, what the hell? I was... Oh, that should have... Mm. Does, does it not work on that move, the cross counter? Or did he hit me in a weird place? I feel like that was close, but like... A 
Okay, I might try one more time. One more time. I don't know. We'll we'll get we'll get there. I don't know why I jumped over him into the corner. He's not really doing anything now. It's not like the AI just went, oh, we'll just let him win. <laughs> He's gonna keep playing. <laughs> If it does that, it's a... <laughs> try again. You can't duck that, I don't think. Well, I tried and it didn't work, so obviously, yeah, definitely that was not me just. I didn't get up. He's going down. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, straight out super. Like, oh, fucking idiot. <laughs> like, <clears throat> you know what's annoying? It's like, you know what you're doing wrong and you're still doing it wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Advance. I can feel it. Oh, should have uppercutted. <laughs> Go away. Leave me alone. I don't want to die. I don't want. Oh. <laughs> saying one more time. I don't know why I'm still backing off, you notice that? It's just a bad habit. Cutting through it and it didn't work, and now he's got full health. Fucking resurrection bullshit. Stuff like that, I don't like this boss for, and yeah, that's the first time he's had to use it, but it is frustrating. Because it's like the same reason Elena's not fun is that healing. Um, 
it's like known as being like the the one that you get pissed at. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the annoying thing about Gil is it's not like when you're fighting Seth. Um, with Seth, it just feels like a wall of annoyance if you're at a certain difficulty level and it's like not fun. With Gil, it's like you feel like, okay, okay, I can like, I can do it. I can feel I can do it. I can, but then your like hands start to go like butterfingery and stuff and you're just like you're just relying on dumb shit that doesn't work and isn't effective and you're just like what am I doing and your habits come into play and whereas Seth it just feels like oh this is just not fun I just might as well put down the controller sometimes because he's doing that dumb teleport spam zongi F move again and again and again and again and you're just like fuck this <laughs> oh well, I'm losing Okay, after this one, because I can feel like the AI is getting fed up with me. <laughs> it's just like wrecking me to make a point now. Or I'm just getting tired and worse somehow. Every time you f I think I'm the worst, I get worse. It's good to have a low opinion of yourself with video games, like fighting games, because then you can't ever be like, oh, I deserve to win, my ego, uh, I'm le- you guys are hacking, <laughs> like, just good. Nah, I'm just bad. You can always look, you can always get better at a fighting game, that's what I like about them. Even cheap Bosch bull- cheap Bosch bullshit. Boss. Uh. <laughs> no! Don't do it, you prick! No! <laughs> Why couldn't you just have let me have one round? I hate that move. No, I will perform no work today. I will, if anything, refuse to work. There. <laughs> Take that, Gil. I will be A, A, A. Final results, D. Never even, go oh, I got one C against Alex. I did say I enjoyed that fight, but oh my god. Look how bad I am, all clear, no. I won, ah, won. Okay, that's the end for today. <laughs> that's